Well, you know, Courtney, it's ironic because we got the largest numbers again today, and this is a heck of a rally. What do you see mm -hmm. in terms of the greatest risk to, 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 to derailing this market? Because it hasn't been staying down long. Yeah, and I, I really am not as concerned about politics. I would say actually COVID is probably one of the biggest risks we have, and are there going to be further lockdowns? And we saw when Europe was locking down, there was definitely some nervousness with that. And it's nothing I'm, I'm necessarily worried about right now, because here in the U.S., those lockdowns are a lot more localized. And actually, Monday was a really good example that we saw the vaccine come out. And the markets did fantastic. I think that's just a good idea of what can come in the markets once we get that reopening happening. And right now, I think right. the markets are probably still lower than they could be if we did have that clarity. As I think this earnings season has been pretty remarkable. Uh, 80, Eighty-four percent of companies have beaten the street. Your, your, your blended loss is seven percent. The street was looking for twenty-one percent. Even revenue, seventy-eight percent beat. Uh, you know, revenue, seventy-eight percent beating in a recession. I'm impressed. But what are your takeaways? You know, what I found pretty fascinating with earnings season is I agree it's been a really good earnings season thus far. But if you really dig into it, certain things like your small caps have been some of the leaders in the things that are beating their expectations, as well as some of your cyclicals. And we've been talking a lot about this over the last few months, that adding to some things like your small caps and your value companies are going to be good plays. And we're starting to see that come out right now during earnings seasons. And I think if you break it out, those are really some of the big winners that we're seeing. The Michigan consumer sentiment number for November, it declined from October. In fact, came well below consensus. Uh, and in fact, when that number came out earlier, the rally stalled. We even started pulling back a little bit. Now, here's the interesting thing. The biggest reason for the decline was plunging optimism among Republicans. If you look six months out, even the current optimism, in fact, was up. The spread between how GOP consumers feel right now versus six months from now, it's absolutely amazing. Courtney, I know you mentioned that you're not into the politics of, of much, but if there's one segment of if half the population starts to lose their enthusiasm as consumers, could that hurt the market? I don't think it's wholly surprising that we're seeing that. We're right in the midst of a very polarized election here, and so it's not that out of the norm to see that come into some of these sentiment numbers. But when we look at it, I mean, at the end of the day, we're investing in these companies, and those companies are very optimistic right now. We actually just came off a week last week with one of the highest amount of dividend increases that we've had since February. And that's showing that these companies are really optimistic on where they are going forward. Not to mention manufacturing orders, which is also a good forward-looking indicator, are really positive right now. They're at a high, I believe, about 17 years. So when I look at how right. companies are optimistic, I'm going to take that over some politics right now because I don't want all of the politic political news to overshadow anybody's investment strategies. So in the, the day we're investing in those businesses. Okay.